Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, normally I cover just Power BI stuff, but I've been hacking around with Power Apps lately. And since Indianapolis is hosting the 2021 NCAA tournament this year, uh, I thought I would uh, make an app to help people uh, uh, collect bracket data and, and have local competitions. Um, in 2018, I wrote a blog article on um, Power Pivot Pro about uh, a Power BI approach to collect and analyze March Madness data. Uh, this was a real fun uh, post for me to put together. Uh, that version used an Excel template to collect bracket data uh, from, from your submitters um, and provided a basic model to, to analyze the data. So please, uh, I'll put a link to this in the post. Um, you, can, you can check it out. Uh, but my plan is to update this Power BI model and this year collect the data with uh, a Power App that resides in a Dataverse for team. And so I'm going to be providing a uh, zipped solution that anyone can deploy in any one of their team channels uh, to host um, a bracket tournament uh, wherever you are. So um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you uh, a walkthrough of that app. Um, keep in mind, I'm a Power BI guy primarily, and I know enough Power Apps to be dangerous. Um, so uh, I'm sure there are lots of improvements potentially out there. Um, since there wasn't a tournament in 2020, I'm using the 2019 bracket data as an example, but it's going to be real easy to update it with the 2021 data once uh, Selection Sunday happens. And so I'll be providing that. Um, in, the, in the second video, I'll actually give, um, and I hope this one will be uh, tomorrow, March 6th, uh, a link to download the Zip solution so that you can install it in one of your team channels. And again, not a Power Apps guy, so um, I thought instead of having a competition, I would just put something out there. So if people wanted to improve the app um, and share it with others uh, as a Zip solution, um, put it on Twitter with a link and use this hashtag, March Madness Power Share, um, and uh, you know make it better. Um, uh, and then for the third video, um, I will introduce a Power BI model that consumes the data from uh, the Dataverse for Teams that you can use as well with a basic report. Um, but again, it won't be the best one possible, and I'll leave it out there for folks if they want to uh, improve it and share that with others using the same hashtag um, on Twitter. Uh, we'll, we'll share the, the one that gets the most likes. Um, so again, I, I often see some some gap between sort of the Power BI community and the Power Apps and Flow communities. And I'm you know, kind of hoping this, this helps. And again, it's not a competition, but, it, but it's sort of a crossover uh, share event. Um, in the fourth video, which will be on Selection Sunday once they announce the brackets, um, I'll have a short video on how to update the app you've already installed with the 2021 bracket table so that you can immediately start collecting uh, bracket data from, from the people in your local competition. Um, if people submit um, improved apps or improved Power BI uh, reports, um, I'll give links to those, and I'll base that on you know Twitter, which which ones get the most likes, uh, so you can use those. Um, so this is only the first video, um, so please subscribe to this channel uh, so you can hear about all the updates from this, um, as well as all the other videos I make for for Power BI and and uh, hopefully in the future more on the Power Platform. All right, so let's jump over uh, to the app. Uh, before I do that, um, this is Excel, and this is actually how I produce the data that goes into um, Power BI or Power Apps as a collection uh, to be used to collect all the data for the app. And so this is just an Excel table um, that has um, one through 67 games. There's the four play-in games, and then there's you know 32 games, 16, 8, 4, 2, uh, 1. And that leads up to 67 games. And so this has the information to uh, tell, sort of structure the bracket that says, you know, the winner of this game goes to that next game. Um, the position says whether it's on the top or bottom position of that of that game on the bracket, uh, what round it is, who the teams are. And then this is actually where you store people's decisions. And then for the last game, you also store the final score in case you have a tie. We use that as the tiebreaker. Um, so again, I use this just to, um, so when I get the new uh, bracket on Selection Sunday, I'll update this table. I have a Power Query set up that generates um, a string that creates the table uh, inside of Power Apps, and we put that into a collection, 
and that's actually the collection we update as people make decisions and then ultimately write that um, collection to uh, the Dataverse for Teams table for, for each uh, bracket submission. All right, so let's jump over to Teams. And I'll just point out first, this is a real simple app. Um, all it has is a single table in Dataverse for Teams called the Brackets table. It has a flow so that you can actually um, have the bracket you submit emailed to yourself. Um, and so therefore, this also uses the um, Outlook connection uh, that you'll need to update. Um, and it has this bracket, C bracket collection uh, used to store the data as each person uh, goes through. Um, I'll just uh, do a quick walkthrough in preview mode so you can see how it works and then I'll just show a few key features of, of how it works. Uh, so everybody gets this as a start screen. They have to put in a unique name for the bracket. Um, it's also possible that you could um, modify one if you hadn't finished before, uh, but this functionality is there really for the person that's running the bracket because this is actually how you store the results as the games are played. Um, you will each after each game you can come in here and, and update to say who won and then this is used as the the comparison to decide uh, how each bracket should be scored against the official results uh, so that's how that's done uh, we'll create a bracket here and it uh, comes up with uh, two screens of brackets here and you can see there's a gallery here for each round um, so the first four rounds here the first four up through the sweet 16 and we just have radio buttons here that you can choose. This is the, the, the four playing games and then you can you can choose there. I won't go through it. Um, these are all on a scrollable page here so you go down and fill out all of all the games so that's the longest one and then you, you go. It gives a running count of how many decisions you have left um, so you make 67 decisions uh, for each bracket submission um, so I won't fill it all out in the demo here but you get the idea that all these would be populated. This would say zero and then you would move to the next page uh, then you would make the other decisions. These, of course, would all be populated, and I'm just going to say Duke, Duke goes all the way. Then you enter in your final uh, final score, for example. Um, this would say zero for a real submission. Uh, then you would hit View Summary. It shows you all your decisions, all 67 games. And, of course, all these would be populated. And for the final game, you would have a score there for the final score. You can then click this button to write the data to uh, the Dataverse for Teams and keep you know, your identifier and when you submitted, uh, as well as email it to yourself so you have a record of, of what you submitted. Um, so that's, that's the app. And I'll just go back out of preview mode here and just show you um, some key things about how it, how it works. If I go back to the start screen, one of the key things here is putting that uh, table uh, from Excel that's generated in Power Query here. So we just clear collect um, and create this C bracket collection. And so this is basically all the information that I showed you in Excel in a Power Apps um, table form. Uh, so it reads that in. You see all the TBDs there. And basically this collection is constantly patched and updated uh, as someone goes through and makes all those decisions. Um, then when you go on to um, the other pages, if we look at one of these uh, galleries first, and you can see it's basically just taking that collection and each gallery is filtered to the round uh, that, that pertains to it. And then all the other information um, is there, the, you know, the game number and all that stuff is there. Uh, it's just a radio button in each one. And the on uh, change there, well, first the items uh, for it you know, comes just from the gallery and it says, you know, which for this game, team one, team two. So that's really simple. And then on the on change, we have two patch uh, actions here. Uh, the first one, once you make a selection, it updates the, the winner for the, for the same row that you're on. Uh, so you can capture who you say won that game between those two teams. And then it also patches the bracket collection to move that team name further down the bracket in the appropriate game so that it's available for the next radio button choice. All right, so that's how all of those work. Um, and then, of course, we've got some navigation buttons. And I think that's, that's primarily it. And then, of course, at the summary step, you know, there we have the submit and email um, kind of functionality. 
Um, and again, based on whether it's a, a new bracket or it's a bracket you're updating, for example, the results bracket, it does the appropriate uh, patch uh, there for that. And then it uh, emails it, so it runs it, uh, sends it over to Flow as, as a JSON, and then the Flow um, converts it to HTML and, and puts it in into an email based on the user of the app. Uh, so a pretty, pretty straightforward flow as well. Okay, so hopefully uh, you'll find uh, this maybe a fun way to introduce um, people to apps inside of Dataverse for Teams, maybe pick up a few things. Again, I'm not a Power Apps expert, um, so certainly welcome to people taking this and, and making it better so that others can, can benefit more from it. All right, so please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, so you can get updates on this, but also all the future stuff I plan to do in the Power Platform. Thank you.